Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 19th of November 2018 and the time has just gone 11.25 GMT. Uh, we've had a positive session in Asia overnight and we've also seen a, a bit of a positive start to the European session this week. Uh, there are several factors going on. Uh, it's very much a continuation of what went on last week. Uh, uncertainty around Brexit, uncertainty, uncertainty around uh, the US-China trade relationship and also uncertainty in relation to the Italian budget. Um, Theresa May is still in, in a is still in, in the, uh, the Prime Ministership role, uh, although she appears to be on on, uh, on, on shaky ground. Uh, but there, there's still kind of uh, speculation circulating in relation to a leadership bid. Um, but, but once again, um, for the time being, it clears that Miss May is going to be staying in uh, number ten Downing Street for the near term. Uh, in relation to the ongoing trade negotiations between the US and China, tensions are still a bit on the high side. Um, no, no kind of further resolution to that. But later this month, China and the United States will be sitting down to have a, have a discussion in relation to trade at the G Summit 20. G Summit 20. Um, and on top of that, um, the, it, it, the, the administration in Rome made only a few tweaks to their uh, proposed budget deficit proposed uh, budget plans for 2019 which were forwarded to the European Union and uh, another ball effectively is in Brussels court where they actually want to press ahead and actually find the uh, Italian government for essentially breaking the rules in relation to running uh, budget deficits or increasing their budget deficit. Um, that's also playing on investors' minds even though all of these issues really haven't actually kind of dented uh, investor sentiment this morning. These are all issues that are kind of bubbling in the background and to be fair we haven't had much actual progress from these issues in the last number of sessions so it's has impacted the stock market so far but it is looming over equity markets um so what i'll do now is take a look at some of the uh, the major markets and see how things uh, are playing out uh starting off with the FTSE 100 uh, i'm intentionally looking at a weekly chart on the FTSE 100 because i want to discuss this red line here the 200 week moving average uh, as you can see here the 200 week moving average actually a decent support uh, back here uh, in back here in, in March at the beginning of this year, and even though it has traded below it uh, in, in recently, uh, a few weeks ago it managed to move back above it, and we're, we're still um, holding above the terrific moving average, which comes to play at 69.65. Um, while we hold north of that line uh, of, the, of the metric, it's likely we could see the uh, the market push on higher from here, and if it does, we could be looking heading up towards. This area here at 7,220 or 7,250. Uh, the 200-week moving average is important because, as uh, as Dow theory tells you, um, the averages must con confirm each other. And so we'll also be keeping an eye on the 200-week moving average for the DAX, the German market. Uh, as you can see here, um, this is the weekly chart on the Germany 30, the DAX. Uh, look, this red line here is the 200-week moving average. Uh, as you can see here. It traded below it, it traded above it, and the recent sessions it actually started trading back below it again. So it is a bit of a negative sign that the DAX is below its 200 week moving average. And we also have the keep mind of the FTSE 100 just above its 200 week moving average. So the averages kind of, you know, according to the two Dow theory, should be confirming each other. If both markets are above their respective 200 week moving averages, you can be more confident the market's going to bounce back. If both are below, you can be more confident we're going to see further losses. But if one's above and one's below, it would suggest investors are a bit, are a bit uncertain. Um, while we, we were in below the 200 moving average on the DAX, it is likely we could see further losses from here. And if we do see the market fall off from here, we could be looking at it back down towards the October lows, or perhaps even down as as, as low as 11,000. Um, Taking a look at this this this, uh, this, um, this chart here, we can see we've, we've seen a nice assess, uh, a nice series of lower highs all along here. We can draw a trend line resistance. Um, along here I'd actually I do it on a daily chart because actually it becomes more clear if you take a line from the high in june to the high in july to the high in september we can see a nice series of lower highs so that's firmly in um a, a downward trend if you do manage to press on higher from here we could be looking heading up towards the kind of 12,000 mark actually the 12,000 mark would be there thereabouts where the potential um where the potential for um resistance will actually come into play so any moves to the upside in the and uh, in, in the DAX may run to resistance at 12,000, and, and if you can see a continuation of the recent downward trend that we've been in, we could be looking at down towards 11,000. Taking a look now at the American markets, which are in far better shape, starting off with the Dow Jones. If you take a look here in the daily chart. I've drawn a low between 
the lows of February, March, April, May, if we get this trend line along here, and notice how it has, has a fairly decent, um, it's been, decent, it's well, been well respected uh, throughout 2018. Granted, we did have, a, when the market did, did have an aggressive sell off in October, it did actually trade below us, but notice how it didn't actually matter. Uh, but the, the, following, the following session, it did manage to actually close above it. Uh, and since then, the market has, has, has has a set of a decent enough bounce back. The market, uh, a decent rally here, gave back some of the ground that lot, gave back some of the ground it made, but it's back above this red line here, the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 25,123. Um, it's looking, while it holds above this trend line, things are looking, or, 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 as we could see further gains we made, that, that, that would be an optimistic sign. While we hold above this red line here at the 200 day moving average, that would also be an optimistic sign. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the August highs, sorry, the October highs rather, this high here, at, um, which comes to play at 26,278. And then if we go beyond that, we'll be kind of looking heading up towards nearest the 27,000 mark, uh, which was a record high that was uh, set back in early October. If the market does manage to turn over itself yet, yeah, yet again, and we fall back below, say, the 25,000 mark, support might come into play from this trend line here. Uh, that would be uh, coming to play in around the kind of 24,000 530, 550 region, so in around here, and a break below that uh, could point to further losses, and so that, that could take us back down towards the uh, psychologically important uh, 24,000 level. But speaking of the uh, the averages must confirm each other, I'll now talk about the trend line support coming to play on the S&P 500, and as we've uh, as we just discussed, trend line support is coming to play on the Dow Jones, and if you draw a low between the lows of on the S&P 500 of the lows of February 2016 with the lows of uh, November 2016, we get this trend line here. And we can see it was actually kind of almost like perfectly respected back in uh, late October when we had the fairly aggressive market sell off So the market bounced uh, right off that trend line there. So we can take that as a positive sign that we're, we're, we've held above that trend line. And while the S&P 500 holds above its trend line support, and the Dow Jones holds above its trend line support, we can be more confident both markets uh, are going to move on higher. So, service situation whereby the market bounced off the trend line support, it rallied, it ra rallied higher, pulled back some of the ground it lost um, between September and October. It's managed to give back some of those gains, and unfortunately, we're back below the 2 day moving average on the S&P 500. The 2 day moving average, this red line here, which comes to play at 27, 000, sorry, 2,764. We're back below that, uh, but we are, we are holding above the psychologically important 2,700 mark. So while we, we hold north of the trend line support, it's likely we could see for we could see um, the wider upper trend continue. But also, it would that would be it would be help it would be helpful if the, the Dow Jones were to, to remain above its 200 uh, above its trend line support as well. So if the S&P 500 does manage to push on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent line, which basically kind of almost runs perfectly into this um, the 100 day moving average at uh, 2,822. So acting as fairly decent resistance. And if you press on higher above that, we could be looking heading towards this level here. Uh, with the, the lows here of, uh, of mid-September, which come into play at 2,866. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at uh, retesting the all-time highs in around the 2,934 region. Any moves to the downside, should you break below the um, the trend line support, like that could point to further losses. And then, of course, if we, we could be looking at, at support coming to play at 2,600. And then a break below that could could take us back down towards the uh, the February lows, which come to play in at 2,532. Looking at what's going on in the commodities, market, commodities space, taking a look at uh, the, the gold market. So gold had a fairly aggressive sell-off between April and August, and the market has managed to kind of bounce back some of the ground, but it's been a bit shaky recently because there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between the gold market and the US dollar. So, so the gold market is appears to be kind of trying to have another push higher, another push higher to be up, push, another push higher, and if it does manage to push out higher from here, we could be looking at uh, retesting uh, the late October high of 1243, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards this metric here at 1265. Um, should we turn lower again, and uh, so if we could be support might come into play in around this area here at 1200, and then a break below that could bring the uh, Mid October low, sorry, the mid September low of, of 1180 into play, and a break below 1180 could uh, take us back down towards 1160, the level not seen uh, since the middle of August. 
Uh, I'll now take a look at what's going on in the oil market, starting off with Brent crude oil. So Brent crude oil has had a fairly aggressive sell-off, uh, to say the least, um, between early October until now. So it's been a huge sell-off all the way down here. We have seen some of the ground uh, manage to actually be, be recouped. But, and as the market's moving higher here, we can notice on the on the MACD indicator, we can see that that negative momentum is folding. So as the market's moving higher, negative momentum is folding. So we, we can be more confident that this uh, that this kind of upward move um, is going to continue. But if we manage to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at resistance coming to play in around the $69 a mark area here, or the $70, $70 per barrel mark in around here. And if we go beyond that, the next thing to keep an eye for will be this red line here at the 200 day moving average uh, at 64 spot 14. And notice how it acted as resistance uh, in early November and also acted as very decent support back in early August. So if, if, if a metric or a level has been important in the past, it makes it all the more likely it will be important again in the, in the future, although there are no guarantees. Uh, if the market does turn over on itself again, it takes out the, yeah, it takes out the, um, the lows in, uh, in early, early November. Uh, 64 spot 63 we could be looking heading back down towards 60 63 spot 32 uh, back down towards this area here at um at 62 uh, 62 dollars per barrel for uh, for brent crude oil take a look now at wti wti is even is, is in even worse shape uh than uh than, than brent crude so once again the fairly aggressive sell-off notice how when it traded it traded it uh, traded lower it, uh, it traded below the, the utility moving average, this red line here, and then it actually kind of bounced back up into it, acting as resistance, and that was only the kind of um, the lower high before another aggressive move to the downside. So the market is kind of creep, creeping higher here. If you do see the market continue to push on higher, it could run into resistance in around $60 a barrel. And uh, then if you go beyond that, $62.50 may, um, may act as resistance. And then for beyond there, we could be looking at... at um, the 200 moving average at 67 spot 38 acting in resistance as i said as i said previously on the uh, break crude chart if a metric has acted as a resistance and or support in the past it makes it more likely we could see it again in the future but once again if the market does turn over itself and take out the uh, the recent lows uh the recent lows of uh 54 spot 73 we could be looking heading back down towards this area here at uh, 52 spot 53 and then if you go below that we can really head back down towards 50 dollars per barrel take a look now at euro dollar so you're at a fairly aggressive sell-off between april uh, and august and then i might say a bit of a decent enough comeback and um, once again the kind of the power of the of the, uh, the us dollar because a lot of fears that, that we're going to have a rate rise in December and we could see some interest rate hikes from the Fed in 2019 coupled with uh, major uncertainty in relation to the, the potential standoff between Rome and Brussels over the Italian budget so that, that's put pressure on the euro in fact the euro only last week fell back to a level uh, that was last seen in June 2017 so giving an indication of actually how much the market actually fell when we, we had the, the sell off last week so it's, it would appear that euro dollar has kind of fallen back into the, the, the wider up, the wider downward trend that that, uh, that began back in April. And if you do look to kind of continue to, if you do look to um, remain in the in the downward trend, and should we take out the uh, last week's low in in around the kind of 112, kind of 15 region, we could be looking heading back down towards uh, this area here in at one uh, one spot 11.10. Um, and, then if go, and then if we go below that, we could really head back down towards the 110 mark. Any move to the upside may run in resistance at this area here, at one spot 15.10 or one spot 15. It acts as fairly decent support and resistance in the, in the last few months, so it makes it likely that we could see acting as resistance again in the near term. Taking a look at, uh, at pound dollar, obviously the British pound has been dragged around by the, the, uh, the situation in relation to Brexit. Uh, so traders are spending less time looking at, at the economic indicators of the uk even though they've actually been pretty good and by and large they've been better than what, what we've seen out of the eurozone but it's all the brexit uncertainty has been uh, has been dragging starting around uh if you take a look here at the, at the price action in the last few weeks we've seen a nice series of lower highs here you can see that the high in november failed to take out the high in october and the high in october failed to take out the high in september so we're seeing a nice series of lower highs although we're not necessarily seeing a series of lower lows but the, kind of the skew is to the downside and while we, we remain south of the kind of psychologically important 130 mark 
which comes into play in around here we could see further losses on, on pound dollar and should we going to push on lower from here we could be looking at targeting the august low at one spot 26.10 and then if you go below that we could be looking heading back down towards this area here uh, at one spot 25.90 uh, any moves to the upside, if you take out 130, we could be looking at any back down for up towards the um, the November high of spot, of one spot 31.74, and then if you go beyond that, we could look up towards the one spot 32 region. I take a quick look now at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com, and under the news and analysis section, you will find this article. Um, is the week ahead article. So looking ahead. At the major corporate and economic events of this week. Uh, so tomorrow we have EasyJet. I'll pull your figures out. Uh, also tomorrow we have the UK inflation hearings, uh, hearings report. Also tomorrow um, on Tuesday we have the uh, Clydesdale Yorkshire Banking Group have their uh, full year numbers coming out tomorrow. Fairly busy day tomorrow as we also have um, Best Buy and Target have quarterly numbers coming out. Uh, on Wednesday we have first half figures from Babcock. Uh, on Wednesday, we also have, uh, have quarterly results from Sears. Uh, on Friday, we have the flash manufacturing and, and services PMI reports for Germany and for France. And then on Friday, we also have uh, Canadian CPI and retail sales. And as it is worth noting that Thursday coming up is uh, Thanksgiving in the U.S., so we, we could so some U.S. markets will be some U.S. markets will be shut. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we we it's like to see low, very low volatility. Uh, in, in basically in global in global financial markets on Thursday, uh, then also keep in mind uh, we've we've um, the um, Black Black Friday um, is, is a big day for kind of a re for retail in America. So keep an eye on re U.S. retail stocks and also European retail stocks as it's become more more popular on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, it's also worth pointing out on our trading platform. You keep up with kind of with daily uh, with daily updates and our intraday updates on the insights section uh, section, which which can be found here. Um, if you click um, on this market tab here, insights uh, under market pulse is the second option down, and then also the third option down is the chart forum, which is the section here whereby um, set up and some of the of the other other analysts will often just take a screenshot of a particular chart, write some commentary on it in relation to potential prices we could see in the future. And it, it isn't just it's anyone anyway with an account can update chart forum. So even um, clients feel free to actually update that and we can actually interact and have a discussion in relation to what we, what we think uh, certain price action could be. Um, that's it in terms of the actual video. Uh, but before we go, if you do have any comments you want to make on this video or any of the other videos that we uh, have uh, conducted here at uh, CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Um, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.